This right here is a handheld spectrometer. It's one of my favorite gadgets that I own, and it's used to measure the light spectrum emitted from light sources or just the ambient light around you. So in addition to this video just being about this cool gadget in general, how it works, what it's for, I'm also gonna be doing some cool experiments, I think, such as testing out these blue light blocker glasses, how well they really work, and I'll also talk about some practical information and tips about lighting in general that you can use when you go to buy your next set of light bulbs or whatever, because this can also actually tell you the quality of the light. Yes, that is a thing, and I'll go over how that works. All right, so let's talk about some actual uses of this thing. And probably the most fun feature, I think, is the ability to test out what the light spectrum is for different light sources around the house. And here are some examples. So first we can look at sunlight because sunlight is considered an ideal light source. But what exactly is an ideal light source? Well, they basically look at what color is emitted when you heat up metal, for example. So you know how when you heat up a metal thing, it first turns like a glowing orange, then it becomes more and more white. And that is called a black body light spectrum because it's something that is like a black metal and as you heat it up it goes from black to white and eventually blue or white hot and as it progresses getting hotter and hotter which actually is measured in kelvin it then is going to emit a light spectrum for that particular temperature and then the, what that spectrum looks like is the color temperature. So that's why if you look at a light bulb box, it'll tell you the color temperature, whereas the lower the temperature, it's gonna look more orange, and the brighter, it's gonna look more blue and white. But not all light sources are ideal. So here's an example of a daylight balanced LED bulb, which is balanced for 6500K, which should look like sunlight at its brightest outside. And you can see it looks a lot different than sunlight. There is actually a big blue spike, which kind of gives it that whiter, bluer color. And then of course there is the other colors mixed in. And you can see if we look at a warm color LED, of course it's going to have a lot less blue in it. Now these LEDs, I believe are balanced for 2700K, which is a very warm orange light. And it, of course this is not an ideal spectrum, but if we do look at an actual incandescent light, which basically is a black body radiator, so this will produce a ideal spectrum at this temperature, which looks like this. And you can see that a naturally produced spectrum is gonna look way more smooth and continuous. So this is going to have a better quality of light, you would say, and I'll go over all that later though. Because minor spoiler, yes, the quality of the light and the spectrum actually can affect how things look in real life or how they appear compared to if you did look at it through an ideal light source like an incandescent or outside. Here's kind of a cool example if we do Philips Hue bulbs, which are RGB bulbs, if we set it to just be blue, of course, there's a big blue spike. And if we set it to red or green, again, it's gonna have spikes on those colors. But if we set it to yellow, for example, it's gonna have a combination of green and red spikes. So that is kind of cool. Now, in addition to showing you just a graph of the light spectrum, this device can also show you a whole bunch of different values of different purposes. Now you're probably thinking, oh, what in God's name are all these? Don't worry, we're, you don't have to know what all these are for. I'm not gonna go over all of them. And if you're curious though, I will put a chart for the names of all these values, maybe if you wanna look it up at some point. But basically a lot of these values are useful for in filmmaking and videography purposes, getting the light colors correct, and also, again, measuring the light quality, which I'll go over later. So all of that is very neat, but why did you even buy this? How is this actually useful? And like I said, I mostly bought it for the video making purposes. And specifically, that is gonna mean getting accurate colors on the lights that I'm using. So for like skin tones, so I don't look extra red or something like that. And also getting consistent color, I can use the measurements to match up the light sources because each light source, even if it's like the same brand, same model, they're gonna be slightly different from each other. So I can use it to match them up by changing some of the settings. So let me show you a real life example of doing this. So if I wanted to set the color temperature on my lights, these ones are kind of fancy. They actually do let you set a color temperature just by turning a dial. But how do I know that that's actually the correct ideal temperature for what it's supposed to be? Like if I set the camera to match that color temperature, maybe it is a little bit off. Or maybe if I set one light again to that color temperature, it might not be the same on the other one, even though the number is the same. And actually you can see that is exactly the case. If I set both of these to say 5,000 Kelvin, then they're not exactly at 5,000 Kelvin. And each one is a little bit different. It might not be enough to notice, but 
if you really want to be 100% accurate, then this is what you'd use. But color temperature is not actually the whole story because it could also have a color cast of magenta or green. I'm not going to get into why those particular colors are the ones you have to worry about, but it is. So this meter can actually tell you how much of a slight color cast it might have and therefore how much you have to adjust the light by to get it back correct. Now, like I said, these lights are pretty fancy and fortunately this actually literally lets you adjust a dial to increase and decrease the magenta green levels. But you could also do it the old fashioned way, which is to just overlay a so-called gel or basically a filter over the light source to kind of cancel out some of that magenta or green. And here's actually a fun fact. A lot of times office buildings will use fluorescent light bulbs, which have a green color cast just because of the spectrum, the chemicals being used in the light. And you have to adjust for that if you want to get a correct color if you're doing video. So to adjust for that, to cancel out the green, you'd use the opposite, which is a magenta filter. You'd literally just put it in front of the light. So to avoid any confusion, these filters are not usually called magenta filters. They're called minus green filters. Because otherwise, if you called it a magenta filter, people might think, wait, does that mean that the filter itself looks magenta or it filters out magenta, which means it would look green. So that name removes the ambiguity and it's just called minus green. If you wanna get rid of green, you buy a minus green filter. Now, speaking of filters, another really cool thing this device can do is it has a bunch of filter brands plugged in. So for video making, there's a bunch of manufacturers that make minus green filters and it has these plugged in. So you can actually use this on a light source and it will tell you the closest brand and model of filter that you would need to get to correctly correct for whatever color cast you have. So that's just another thing built in in terms of videography features. So next up, let's do something a little bit fun. So I bought a bunch of these different blue blocking glasses of different strengths, and we can actually test out exactly what they do and what they look like on the light spectrum when you look through them. And there are different strengths of these, obviously, that you can buy. For example, these ones are supposedly going to block all blue light effectively. And this is something you would use at night, like if you want to help with your sleep, you might know that blue light tends to mess with your circadian rhythm and keeps you up later. So if you wear this at night, then this could help out by reducing that blue part of the spectrum. There's also these more lighter ones, which don't block out all the blue light, but might block out a good amount. These are usually advertised as like computer glasses. They can help reduce eye strain, supposedly, that sort of thing. And then there are even of those that almost look completely clear and they're actually advertised as having a clear lens. So do these actually work, especially these ones? That's kind of what I wanted to find out and the results are kind of interesting. So the three different types I bought, the first one is this cheapo Livho brand advertised as having clear lenses. This is the one I was actually really skeptical about because it on the pictures it looked like it was not tinted at all. And it's like 15 bucks for a two pack. I thought this might be some kind of scam, so I wanted to test it. I also bought Gunner Optics. These are like a more expensive brand. This was like 45 bucks. And this is the amber tint of glasses. They also do make a clear one. This is the second weakest strength. So it goes clear, amber, and then there's two other stronger ones. And then these are Spectra brand blue blockers, and these are advertised to block basically all blue light virtually, and even some in the green spectrum, so we can test that out. And basically I did two different tests for each, for two different light sources. One was sunlight, and then another one was my monitor set with a just white screen. And then I did a before and after with the glasses in front of the sensor, and then not. Now, first we have this cheapo Livo brand. And like I said, I was skeptical about this one because the pictures look like it has no tint. They also include this test card, which supposedly shows you how the the glasses block harmful blue light, they say, but this is clearly just a UV light sensitive test card, and this is clearly a UV flashlight. And actually, if we look at the light through the meter, it actually does show that it's smack dab on the middle 400 nanometers, which is like the edge of ultraviolet. So yeah, this is not a blue light test card, it's a ultraviolet light test card. So I was kind of thinking, all right, this might be a scam actually, but if you do put these on, they do have an ever so slight yellow tint, so we'll have to test it further. So this is the spectrum of direct sunlight, and now we can compare it to through the glasses. And in this comparison, the yellow line is the original sunlight, and then the colored spectrum is what is through the glasses. So right off the bat, we can see it blocks UV light, 
which starts at around 400 nanometers. So the part about blocking UV light is correct, but it only slightly reduces the blue, only a little bit. So next we can test with the computer screen. This is what it looks like, no glasses or anything, just right on the screen. And it's interesting, you can actually see the three different colored peaks for the RGB. And again, we can see that it does slightly reduce the blue, although it kind of reduces it across the board, but slightly more in the blue. But subjectively though, do these actually work? Well, I think it depends on the use case. So if you're just purely using this to try and reduce eye strain while maybe looking at a computer, maybe it would help. So for example, I have this TN panel that I am using while I have my IPS monitor out for repair and this thing like sears my eyes. It's so bright, so blue shifted. And when I put it on, it does ever so slightly, I think take the edge off the bright blueness of it. So there have also been reviews I read on the Amazon page and people did say it kind of reduced the eye strain. So that might be useful, just taking the edge off some of the blue light, but I definitely wouldn't really consider these like blue blocking glasses. And it says it blocks the harmful blue light although that's mostly just the UV and like a little bit of the blue. If you want to really reduce the blue light you're seeing, you're gonna have to go with something that actually looks yellow. If it doesn't look yellow in the lens, then it's not gonna be canceling out any blueness. And by the way, that's going to apply to any brand of glasses that have a clear type blue blocking lens. It's only gonna block a very slight amount of blue. So if you're gonna be using these for like sleep to reduce blue light, it's not gonna work at all, or at least a negligible amount. Now let's take a look at these gunner optic ones. And these are gonna obviously have a more stronger result because you can visibly see that they are yellow. And here's the results for sunlight for these. And right off the bat, you can see that there is a much more noticeable difference. So it reduces more blue light at more wavelengths of blue and by a larger amount than the clear ones. So that shouldn't be a surprise. Now, when we look at the monitor though, it actually kind of was surprising because it looks like there's a way bigger difference in this situation. Though that could be because the blue spike in general is just bigger. And in terms of subjectively using these, I did get the Aviator ones because it covers more of your visual field, I think. And this one obviously is much more noticeable when you put these on. And I definitely think these actually do reduce the harshness of at least the monitor I'm using. So if you do have like a big bright monitor that you think is kind of annoying to look at, then something like this I probably would recommend. There's definitely cheaper options than gunner optics. So you can maybe look into those. But there are also software solutions that I can mention in a minute. All right, now we can look at what I think is the most interesting one. This one supposedly blocks all blue light, or at least like 99.9% .9 of it. And you can see these literally look orange. So this one should be interesting. So again, here's what sunlight looks like normally. And here it is through the glasses. Wow. I think it's safe to say that it does work as advertised. It's just flatlined on the blue and it even cuts down a vast majority of the green as well. And it shows on the page that I think it's supposed to block out 80% of green. So that seems to be true. And if we look at the test with the monitor, here's before and then after, and yep, same story, all the blue is gone. And these are actually kind of interesting because if you have any devices around the house that have a pure blue LED, when you wear these, it just looks like it's off completely, the light. So that's just kind of interesting. And when looking at monitors, another thing to note is that because monitors have RGB subpixels, if you look at something that's kind of a mixed color, it will often make it look green because it reduces the green, but doesn't completely eliminate it like the blue. So some things will go from looking kind of bluish to green. And then of course the red ones still show. Now, all this being said, do you actually need to go and buy computer glasses? Probably not. Now, if you want to use these for like sleep aid purposes or whatever at night, then yeah, you would actually have to go buy true blue blocker glasses and you have to get them that blocks all blue light like these. And these are ones I actually use. So I'll put the link in the description. I would recommend these. But if you just wanna reduce some of the blue light on your computer, there is actually a software solution called Flux. I've recommended this for years and it basically just changes the color of the screen to reduce blue light, look more orange and it's free. And you can crank this down pretty much as low as you want to reduce as much blue as you want. And you can see that it really does get that blue light way down. So that might be something to try first, or you can just do it a little bit again, just to maybe take the edge off. All right, so moving on, we can now talk about the topic of light color quality, which I actually think is really interesting. 
Now, in general, the quality of light, you're basically gonna be comparing it to a black body light source. So that would be daylight at like 5,500 Kelvin or 6,500 Kelvin, or an incandescent light at 2,700 Kelvin. And again, this is what daylight looks like. This is what a incandescent light bulb looks like. You can see they're mostly continuous. The light bulb more so, but the daylight still kind of, there's no spikes or anything. Now at this point, you might be thinking, well, now what are you talking about the light quality from a light bulb? Every light bulb I've ever bought looks fine. And that's because our brains do a really good job of adjusting to light. So yeah, for 99% of the time, it's not really gonna make a difference. And that's why if you use really warm light bulbs, 2700 Kelvin, then if you're looking at stuff, you can still easily tell what color it is and how the color compares to another color in that light. It's not like if we're inside with a warmer color light bulb that everything literally looks orange. Our brain adjusts for it, so it doesn't matter. And of course, we can do the same thing if we're outside. And that also applies to maybe not ideal light sources that have kind of spiky spectrums. Our brain mostly adjusts for it. But if you want to take the red pill of light bulbs, I can tell you that most light bulbs actually do not reflect the real color of things when you're looking at it. So what you might be seeing might actually be slightly wrong. Now again, it's gonna look close enough where most people, vast majority of people, are not gonna notice unless maybe they changed it to an ideal light source. And this might make a difference if you have like nice paintings on the wall or something, or nice photographs, then it is very possible that with a higher quality of light, that painting or whatever is going to look better or at least closer to what the artist intended. And yes, of course, I will talk about how you can tell how good the light is in a second. But first, if you're still not sure what I'm talking about or you're skeptical, let me give you an extreme example to show my point. Take, for example, those yellow street lights you may have seen in the past, not so much anymore, they're more LEDs, but you used to see these yellow street lights that were actually called low pressure sodium lamps. And this has a very funny looking spectrum. It's literally just yellow, a narrow spike of yellow. And if you look at this picture of two cars under this type of light, you might think, all right, they look like they're both black, right? But actually the one on the left is bright red and the one on the right is actually black, but they both look black in this picture. And that's because the reason that car is going to look red in regular light in the first place is because the paint absorbs all colors that are not red and then reflects only the red light back at you and that's why you see it as red. So since there is no red wavelengths in this light source, it's just yellow, then that yellow wavelength is going to be absorbed by the paint just as it normally is. And since there's no red wavelengths to be reflected, then it's just gonna look black. There's nothing coming off it. So if you imagine this on a way less extreme level, then you can see how if you have a light bulb that is producing too much or too little of certain wavelengths, then that in turn is gonna mean it's going to reflect off objects too much or too little of certain wavelengths. And then it's not gonna look correct technically. So what do we actually use to measure and represent the light quality of a light bulb or light source? Well, the general term is the color rendering index. And this actually uses a bunch of different sampled colors that are kind of standardized. And these are test color samples, TCS. And there are different values that are R values with a number and each color sample is assigned to one of these R value numbers. And the higher the R value means the more accurate that light is emitting that particular color. And it goes from zero to 100. Now there is one thing that's a little bit confusing. There is a overall term for like one combined rating that is often used. And that is also called color rendering index or CRI. So color rendering index, usually when you see it, it's referring to a combined value, which takes into account the first eight R values. So R one through eight. And usually on light bulbs and stuff, you will see, it'll say CRI 95 or CRI 80. And that is basically saying how good the first eight colors are and just kind of using that as a general representation of the quality of the light. And this combined rating is also called RA. So if you are out shopping for light bulbs, you can look to see if it has a CRI rating and basically anything above 80 is considered decent. It's, you know, good enough passable. Anything above 90 is good and anything above 95 is like excellent. However, this CRI rating is not actually perfect because like you probably saw, there's way more color sample possibilities. This literally only uses the first eight and actually does not use some important color samples such as 
R9, R13, and R15. The R9 is red, and the other ones are more skin tone color, but all of these are important for rendering correct skin tones. So it is possible for manufacturers to kind of game the rating where it might have a really good CRI because the first eight colors are right, but then the rest of them might suck, but it's still gonna have a high CRI rating. But there is another better newer rating called TM30, although you don't really see this very often, but I still wanna talk about it. Unlike CRI, which only uses eight color samples, this one actually uses 99 color samples. And instead of being represented as just one basic number as the quality, it actually shows you way more information for this rating because you can show it as a circle. And how you actually read this is each point on the circle is basically a sub selection of all the 99 colors or like a combination of them. And if the circle of the light source is outside the ideal circle, that means that particular color is oversaturated. If it's inside the circle, it means it is undersaturated compared to the ideal light source. And those little arrows also show how far off the hue is for that color. So the more the arrow points sideways, that shows there's a hue shift and the color is wrong, like number 11. And if it points inward or outward, that shows the saturation is wrong, like number one but it could be both, like number 15 looks pretty far off for both. So unlike CRI, which just gives you one simple number, this one actually shows you which colors are not as good or better and how. Now there is an average number rating that you can get with this TM30 system, although you actually get two of them. So one of them is RF, which is the fidelity index. This basically is the sameness of the colors overall. So you might say, this is how the hue of the color compares to what it's supposed to be. And then also there is the RG, which is the gamut index, which is how much that particular color is saturated compared to how it's supposed to be. So you kind of get a little bit more information. Well, a lot more if you're looking at the circle chart and that might help you make a decision on which ones you want to get depending on the purpose. Unfortunately, it's not very common to see this TM30 rating. Most still use the CRI number, but again, if you're just using this for house lighting and stuff, the CRI is definitely gonna be enough. And again, over 95 is excellent, 90 is good, and above 80 is like acceptable. But if you are trying to look up like video lights or something you're gonna be using professionally or you want the highest quality, then definitely look for ones that might have a TM30 rating or see if you can find someone who rates it themselves. All right, so I know we went over a lot in this video. If you enjoyed the video, let me know what you think down in the comments, give it a thumbs up, and also maybe consider checking out the rest of my channel. Maybe take a look at some of the videos I've made and see if you want to subscribe. And if you do, also click the bell next to the subscribe button to enable notifications so the videos don't get lost in the rest your subscription feed. If you want to keep watching, the next video I'd recommend is another gadget video where I talked about a microphone that is an ultrasonic microphone. It can record up to 100 kilohertz, way more than what we can hear as humans, and then I test some ultrasonic devices to see what they would look like if we could hear them. Really cool, I'll put that video right there. So thanks so much for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next one.